So all the way back at the beginning of this section, I introduced this whole problem by starting off by looking at proper and improper fractions. Now, if you remember, this is an improper fraction because what we have is the numerator has actually the same power of x, the same largest power of x, as the denominator has. So we've got an x squared in the denominator, we've got x squared in the numerator. So it is improper because it has the same or more or, or higher power of x than, is, than what is in the denominator. So the fact that it's got this x squared bit there is what is causing it to be improper. It could be x cubed, x to the 4, x to the 5, whatever. That would still make it improper. Okay? I would need to have just a linear term in the numerator to make it a proper fraction. So if you then wanted to do partial fractions on something like this, then there is a problem because uh, you cannot write it as a sum of proper fractions. Okay? It wouldn't make much sense in order to do that. So, we have to do something first, and that something is actually polynomial division. Okay? So, what we need to think about is what 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 over x squared uh, plus 6x minus 16, what that actually is. So, I use polynomial division. So, I've got the x squared 6x and minus 16 down the left-hand side. And I'm going to have this 3x squared. So that would have to be 3. 3 lots of 6x is 18x. 3 lots of minus 16 is minus 48. Okay. So, I don't want 18x. I want minus 5x. So I would have to take away 23x, and I don't want minus 48, I want 7. So I would have to add on 55. So what I've got is that 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 over x squared plus 6x minus 16 must be the same as 3 plus minus 23x plus 55 over x minus 2, x plus 8. And it is this right-hand fraction that you can then think, well, OK, that is now a prop fraction, and we can do partial fractions straight on that. So we can say that this is equivalent to 3 plus a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 8. So you can just focus your attention on writing this fraction as these partial fractions. Now, you don't have to um, use polynomial division because if you, can, if you know that uh, you've got the same power of x um, the same highest, largest power of x in the numerator and denominator, then you will get this constant term plus a proper fraction. Okay, So you can just say, well, that's going to be some number plus bx plus c over x squared plus 6x minus 16, and then use the form of partial fractions to find a, b, and c that way, okay? Multiplying both sides by the x squared plus 6x minus 16. So you could say, well, 3x squared minus 5x plus 7 must be the same as a lots of x squared plus 6x minus 16 plus bx plus c.
and then you could substitute in values of x to find a, b, and c. But this way is certainly going to be easier. Okay. Um, now, from that, once you've got your a, b, and c, you would still have to uh, use partial fractions on the bx plus c over x squared plus 6x minus 16 part. Okay. So that's not ideal. So you could then think, well, OK, so if I know it's going to be in this format, I could think, well, this bit I will be able to write as partial fractions. And so I could write that part as b over x minus 2 plus c over x plus 8. OK, so if I rewrite that like that, then you're saying to yourself, well, OK, now I can multiply both sides by x minus 2, x plus 8. And I'm going to get a lots of x minus 2, x plus 8, plus b lots of x plus 8, plus c lots of x minus 2. And then you could work out your a, b, and c using the usual substitution method. So you could go through it that way. And that would um, circumnavigate, if you will, the partial fraction side. It really depends on what you, you would find easier to do. So if we ramped this up a little bit, Let's say I changed this to x cubed, 3x cubed minus 5x plus 7. So now I've got a cubed term in the numerator and a squared term in the denominator. So now if I used uh, polynomial division, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to get a linear term. Okay plus a remainder. So I'm going to get a linear term, an ax plus b, from the fact that I've got a cube divided by a squared, plus this cx plus d over the x minus 2, x plus 8. But this part I could write as partial fractions. So instead of writing it like that, I could write it as c over x minus 2 plus d over x plus 8. OK, so I've got a linear term plus the partial fractions. If I had 3x to the 4 minus 5x plus 7 over x minus 2 x plus 8, now I've got a quartic in the numerator and a quadratic in the denominator. So when I do a quartic divided by a quadratic, I will get a quadratic term plus partial fractions. So I'll get ax squared plus bx plus c plus d over x minus 2 plus e over x plus 8. OK, and using um, the partial fraction of method of substitution, I can work out A, B, C, D and E. So you can extend this as far as you like. OK, and the problems can get more and more complex. Now remember, this is just extension work here. OK, so you wouldn't meet this in the exam. This is just for you to kind of really explore and uh, have a go and just practice your algebra skills.